and welcome to the program. I'm so glad you can join me today, but I'm taking just a short midsummer break, and I'm going to play the audio track to one of my newer DVDs, Why We May Be the Terminal Generation, 15 Signs of His Imminent Return. This is in DVD form, available for you. It has about 80 PowerPoint slides, as well to illustrate all the points I am making. So let's begin with Why We May Be the Terminal Generation. As we look at some signs for the next few minutes here, again, you know, some of them might be a little bit on the, I want to say, dark side. Let's not see them that way, but rather these are a harbinger of his return. And if, as we see headlines on a daily basis, and some of them can be pretty awful, and we certainly grieve where we should be grieving, but still let's see them as a harbinger of his return rather than any kind of gloom and doom. And I could literally, I'm going to talk about 15 signs, I could talk about it, 315 signs of his imminent return. And again, I'm going to give just a little disclaimer here before we get going, and, and that is I'm very aware that a huge number so-called signs of the times manifest in the tribulation. They're really for the tribulation. Others are for the church age, but those that are tribulation signs, again, they're casting a shadow now because we're so close. We're so close. So we got to be careful that we keep those things kind of separate and not claim as a sign for today something that's really only tribulation. And all the speakers here are aware of that, but I just want to clarify that. And loving this kind of a topic, it's the only place in the Bible where a crown is promised for those who love his appearing. Now, you wouldn't be here today if you didn't love his appearing. So you got one crown. That's a given. You got one crown for sure. I'm sure sure you have more, but for sure you have one because for those who love his appearing, you know, God is very, very pleased. Why don't we just go through these 15 signs that I think would be probably the most prominent of the various indicators the Bible said. You know, Jesus chastised the Pharisees for not knowing the signs of his first coming. He surely wants us to know the signs of his return, and which is a herald of the second coming. Anyway, I just think that we need to have a balance in there, and not call everything a sign of the times, which some people will do. And therefore, what I've tried to do is zero in on 15 that I think are irrefutable, that are blossoming more every day. And again, number one, I believe they're not necessarily in this order, because Israel is down a little ways here, so they're not necessarily in this order, but would be the calls for peace and security which comes out of 1 Thessalonians 5, for you are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night while people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a woman and they will not escape, but you are not in darkness, brothers. You are not in darkness, brothers and sisters, for that day to surprise you like a thief. It won't surprise you because you're watching for some of the indicators And again, you know, the United Nations, it's all about peace and security, peace and security, respect, safety and dignity and security and peace. That's all over all United Nations type literature. And this is the United Nations publication, maintain international peace and security. Now, the nations came into being in 1945 following the devastation of the Second World War with one central mission, the maintenance of international peace and security. Right out of the Bible, the UN has a plan to restore international peace and security. Will it work? Peace and security. I don't know that I heard this 15, 20 years ago. I don't think I did, not to the level that we're hearing it today. Donald Trump is a great advocate of peace and security. Donald Trump, we have laid out a pathway toward peace and security in our world. I'm going to play just a clip here. The quality is not the best, but I felt that the the clips captured were so significant that I ask you to put up with the quality of the clip here. The objective is to have a Palestinian state on 
the borders from 1967 that will live in peace and security. The lesson of history is that peace and security do not come easily. Peace and stability uh, that uh, people on all sides long for. Two states for two peoples living side by side in peace and security is not a vague slogan, but a real necessary necessity for the stability in the entire region. Israel and Palestinians, they can live side by side in peace and security. This is our vision, this is our commitment. For the new deal, peace and security and friendship, she's in need. My hopes and dreams for Israel are to live in peace, to live in peace and security. Two states living side by side in peace and security. True security for all Israelis. We will also pursue peace between Israel and Lebanon. In peace and security. Israel and Syria. Peace and security. And a broader peace between Israel and its many neighbors. Must decide whether we are serious about peace and security. To recognize Israel's legitimacy and its right to exist in peace and security. That's how we will find new pathways to peace and security. That is the work that we must do. In peace and security. Peace and security and, and coexistence. A movement towards peace. If we have this triangle, economy, security, and peace, then peace can succeed. I think you get the point there. I mean, it's like people are obsessed with this. It's right out of the Bible, right out of the Bible. If you just joined me, I'm playing the audio to one of my newer DVDs, Why We May Be the Terminal Generation, 15 Signs of His Imminent Return. And you can find this in our web store, in our print and e-newsletters, or by calling us. You can find it in the store, olivetreeviews.org, and go to our store. You can also get just a CD of this program if only the audio is sufficient for you. But again, the title of the DVD is Why We May Be the Terminal Generation. Let's return to that now. Point number two. It says, business as usual, people will be enjoying life and then caught unaware. And how many of you have tried to talk to people about, you know, you need the Lord, the hour is late, you don't want to delay, you need to make a decision for God, and they're caught up with the pleasures of the world, they're caught up with entertainment, they're caught up with their family life, they're caught up with their business, they're caught up with making money. You've got them in your family or your neighbors or your co-workers, your friends, and you kind of given up because they have a business as usual. Life's going to go on and on and nothing's going to interrupt my world. Well, someday something is going to interrupt their world. I believe it's called the rapture that's going to interrupt their world. And of course, if they know the Lord Jesus in a personal way, then they <laughs> we go together in the rapture. If not, they're left behind, and then they will start to pay attention. They will start to pay attention. Again, and I've referred to Donald Trump today, and, and he has created an economic climate. Stocks surge as investors cheer corporate tax cut. Big corporate tax cut in the United States will bring more prosperity. President Trump surfs a prosperity wave that could grow larger. I believe Donald Trump was necessary to bring about this sort of business as usual. We're enjoying life. The, our profits are up. Our bank account is up. Our IRAs are up. We can relax and we can enjoy life. And I believe it's that atmosphere during which the Lord will descend with a shout and the trump it will be when people are simply enjoying the fruits of prosperity, prosperity, peace, safety, etc. So that's number two. Number three, I think, is what I have seen is the increase in mocking and scoffing. Second Peter 3, knowing this first, that in the last days mockers shall come with mockery, walking after their own lusts, saying, where is the promise of his coming? For from the day the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Hey, nothing's changed, folks. It's as it's always been. Why are you so worried about the world coming to an end? You fools. That's what folks are saying. And even fellow believers are saying it. The, on the one side, last day's madness. That's written by a Christian, Gary DeMar. He happens to be a preterist. I'll mention what that is a little bit later. On the other side, Rapture Palooza. That's a Hollywood movie. It's probably three, four, five years ago. A movie mocking. The, oh, it was unbelievable. There, even the plagues were coming down. The plagues were happening. And these characters were considering it a joke. 
It was the saddest thing I ever saw because when it happens and they're caught up in it, they won't say rapture palooza. They're going to say, oh, dear God, save us, help us. And it may be too late. But mocking, mocking. Newsweek magazine had a major article recently. Trump will start the end of the world, claim evangelicals who support him. And then that article went on to mock those of us who believe that we are late in the hour and that Donald Trump is discontributing, as I've already indicated, and that he will start the end of the world claim evangelical. So it's mocking, it's mocking, it's mocking. Every year, for instance, my conference online is hung every year. Gary DeMar again, Jan Markell's end time hysteria conference, and then he goes on to make fun of it. At the same time, the mocking of the pre-trib rapture. Do you know that people online are making videos and hanging people like myself like Pastor J.D. Farag and others who are very uh, adamant about a pre-trib rapture. They're making YouTubes, mocking us. These are fellow believers. I'm not going to name them, but making YouTubes. They think, you know, we we believe in, in science fiction. We believe it's more likely to believe that there are little men on Mars than to believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. You need, to, you need to believe that we're going through the tribulation and we got to hide from Antichrist. That's, what, that's our blessed hope. Our blessed hope is to take cover before Antichrist finds us and has our head cut off. That's our blessed hope. But that is uh, prevailing these days and then the mocking of the truth is simply out of control. Now, I'm going to add another dimension here of mocking. I'm going to play a real short clip. It's about a minute. And uh, when Michelle Bachman was on air with me recently, this would have been either a year ago or two years ago, almost to the day. I think it's two years ago. She and I talked about the fact that President Obama at the time was kind of paving the way for the end times. A lot of the things he was doing was setting the stage for the last days. And he got wind of it. And this is his response. And you talk about mocking. I think this speaks for itself. It gets worse. Just this week, Michelle Bachman actually, actually predicted that I would bring about the biblical end of days. Now that's a legacy. That's big. I mean, Lincoln, Washington, they didn't do that. When it happens, they will not be laughing. They will be saying, oh dear God, I missed it. I made fun of the wrong thing. And it'll be possibly too late. So... But again, I've never seen the scoffing and the mocking coming right out, even out of the, the White House anyway, on, in this case. But in the church, among believers, among unbelievers, among presidents, among people in high places, online, mocking, mocking, mocking. You fools, you fools, how can you believe in this? Because the Bible tells me so. That's why. Hope you'll stick around. We're going to take a short time out. When I get back, we'll return with my presentation of the audio of a recent DVD I made, Why We May Be the Terminal Generation, back in just a couple of minutes. We know you're enjoying Jan Markell's presentation on the Terminal Generation on today's Understanding the Times. Remember, the video portion of today's broadcast is available on our website at olivetreeviews.org. And you can find the DVD, The Terminal Generation, in our online store. You can order your own audio copy of today's program when you phone 763-559-4444. Every week, this ministry addresses current events in our world as seen through the lens of the Bible. Thank you for your continued financial and prayerful support. You make this outreach possible. Find out more about this program, visit us online at olivetreeviews.org. We invite you to partner financially with us. We welcome your tax-deductible gifts mailed to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. In just one moment, we'll return to the Terminal Generation. This is Jan Markell, and our mission as a ministry calls believers to think beyond the news to see how the truth is being dismissed and rejected. Today, when many broadcasters are talking about safety, we are talking about the loss of truth. Thanks for joining me here on this radio station. 
Understanding the Times 2018 is almost sold out now. Why don't you consider getting a group together to live stream the event at your computer or perhaps put it on a big screen? There is no cost or registration involved for streaming. Our speakers include Amir Sarafati, Pastor Jack Hibbs, Pastor Billy Crone, Pastor J.D. Farag, and Eric Barger. We will help you understand that nothing is falling apart. In fact, things are all falling together. Events that could be interpreted as chaotic and dark are really a herald of his return. We'll also help you contend for the faith. Fellowship with like-minded is essential for spiritual health and to stay optimistic and looking up. Our event and live streaming is Saturday, September 29th, but you will be able to access the archived programming following that event. I promise our speakers and their topics will keep you focused on the bigger picture. God has everything under control. The King is coming right on time. He's never early, he's never late, and he wants none to be left behind. Just a quick add-on here, please, that reserved seats for handicapped and hearing impaired have not sold as we expected, so we're cutting those in half. That means that a few prime seats are now freed up, but you need to call the Brush Fire Agency, 888 3385338 888-338-5338 so some of those could still be available but they will sell fast we are near we are close would be what i see as the rise of wickedness and this would fall into several categories it would include mankind's character will decline will be given over to a depraved mind. Again, that goes back to that Romans 1. The depraved mind out of Romans 1. There's lots of depravity going on. And evil is going to wax worse and worse. Again, these all, I believe, come under the category of the rise of wickedness. On today's Understanding the Times radio broadcast, you're hearing just the audio portion of a recent video recorded by Jan entitled The Terminal Generation. Let's get back to that presentation. Once again, Jan Markell. If you join me late, I am playing the audio to a new DVD I made about 15 signs reflecting Christ's imminent return in the rapture. And you can find the DVD again, Why We May Be the Terminal Generation, in our web store. I'll say more about that a little bit later as we close. Let's get back to the presentation, which actually was made live in a church recently here just a couple of months ago. Okay, number four, point number four, I believe. Signs that are indicating we are near, we are close, would be what I see as the rise of wickedness. And this would fall into several categories. It would include mankind's character will decline. I think that's kind of obvious as we watch around us from, you know, the transgender to you name it. Man's character is simply on the fast downhill. We'll be given over to a depraved mind. Again, that goes back to that Romans 1. I talked about that earlier today. The depraved mind out of Romans 1 has lots of depravity going on. And evil is going to wax worse and worse. Again, these all, I believe, come under the category of the rise of wickedness. A self and money will be all that matters. And all of these, these are found in Romans 1, in 2 Timothy 3, in Matthew 24. And again, if it's going to blossom in the tribulation, it's casting their shadow now. Though the Second Timothy 3 passage is given to the church. And Romans 1, I believe, is absolutely for right now with the depraved mind. So uh, then we've had things like we had Parkland, Florida recently. And by the way, that took place on Ash Wednesday, I believe it was. I believe there was something to that. The suspect said that he heard voices telling him to carry out the massacre. So I I believe demons were involved. But again, we can look at this and say, oh, what gloom and doom. Jan, no wonder you don't have any followers anymore. They've they've all left you because you're 
grossing them out. Well, again, it's a herald of his return when we see these kind. If you can look at some headlines a little bit more with that perspective, I think you'll have a different perspective. So he said he heard voices. Well, we know who he heard. And that's because this wickedness is rising and rising and rising. And recently, the Washington Post had an editorial, and it literally said, I just, I couldn't believe it. It said, Satan is good. He's a good illustration of secularism. Give me a break. People are dying all around the world because of him. But the Washington Post called him Satan good. Christians are responsible for, you fill in the blank, bad things. But Satan is good. And, oh yeah, Satan, it does make at least one thing clear. Democracy dies in darkness is not a warning, it's a goal. Anyway, you talk about Isaiah 520, calling evil good and good evil. The Washington Post, Satan is good. Now, we're still in the category of the decline of man's character. As this couple, if I can dare say it, couple, obviously one is a transgender, uh, thinks this is so cool. Woman who became a man, though he, she is very pregnant. Days of Noah type things. And they're so proud of this. You know, they're so proud of the aberrant, which is part of what goes along with that days of Noah, is a celebration of the aberrant. And, and this darling little eight-year-old, talk about child neglect and child abuse. I mean, who is ever responsible for this almost should go to jail. This eight-year-old drag queen says, if your parents won't let you do drag, you need new parents. Again, this is all part of that decline that's predicted for the last days, this decline of character, this decline of, again, common sense. People have been dumbed down. They've been moroned down. We talked about this morning. When you see clergy here, they're celebrating, they're blessing a late-term abortion clinic and calling it holy. Again, this is days of Noah-type activity. And remember that return of, to the days of Noah was prophesied uh, actually by Jesus that that would be characteristic of when he returns, that we're going to see a sort of a celebration of the aberrants. Let's just say, let's be blunt, of perversion. Pastor Tom Hughes talked this morning about the soaring strong delusion. I cannot second that strongly enough. He gave some examples. I'm going to give you some more. In that the two messages this morning were complementing each other with content. Apparently the Lord saying amen to what we were saying. Here are some illustrations of strong delusion. He gave some this earlier. Here's a few more. Again, John Kerry, climate change is as dangerous as terrorism. Oh, give me a break. Give me a break. Non-existent climate change is as dangerous as terrorism. Strong delusion. Strong delusion. They're given over to the depraved mind. They cannot think. They cannot make sense. They've been dumbed down. It's part of what's been predicted. The, all bathrooms should be gender neutral. You got a little four-year-old daughter or granddaughter? Take her to that transgender. But There might be a 300-pound guy in there who's ready to beat her up. But this is what we celebrate today is we've got to have neutral, gender neutral bathroom. They're dumbed down. They can't see truth. And in this case here, a new law, this is in America, allows government to take children away if parents don't accept kids' gender identity. So again, this is days of Noah type behavior, thinking, standards, values, and we can look at it as gloom and doom, or we can say, you know what? The Bible told us so, and we're beginning to see it manifest. The king is coming. The King is Coming. You can find this DVD presentation. Remember, it has about uh, 80 PowerPoint slides to illustrate all the points that I am making. You can find it in our web store at olivetreeviews.org, in our print and e-newsletters. And you can certainly call us business hours. You can get a CD of this program if only the audio is sufficient for you, though I always strongly recommend the DVD with the PowerPoint illustrations that add so much visual to this kind of a presentation. Again, the title of the DVD is Why We May Be the Terminal Generation. Let's get back to the presentation. Okay, number six. And again, these are 15 signs that I believe we need to be seriously considering as a herald of his coming and it would be the surge and mark of the beast technology. 
And I just recently featured uh, Pastor Billy Crone on air with me for two weeks on artificial intelligence. Go to my website if you would like to and get those two programs. I think people across America were stunned. I know they were because they called and called and called and called and called. They were stunned. They did not know that technology today, not only is it intrusive and invasive, Amazon wants to put a camera and a microphone in your bedroom. Echo Look will use machine learning to decide if you look fat in that shirt. What's going on is, is, well, it's that machines are rivaling human intellect. And you know who's going to tap into this. We've got Sophia the robot. Not only have a conversation with Sophia the robot, she might be more interesting and a better conversationalist than your spouse. Not trying to knock your spouse, but I'm just trying to say this gal really has a conversation. You ask it questions, she'll answer. This is Sophia the robot. Again, how Antichrist would use this, I have no idea. Maybe there's an image of the beast involved here. That's all speculation. We don't know. I mean, she's even, this is again, Sophia the robot. She's even made a fashion magazine cover. Again, that's Sophia the robot. So she's taking on human characteristics, and it's going to play into Mark of the Beast technology somehow. We're not going to be here, so we don't have to worry about it, but there are going to be plenty of people caught off guard with this kind of technology. And, you know, I praise the Lord for technology, even though many of you hear me groan and moan because wherever I travel, there's technology issues going on. But with one click of the mouse, we now can get the gospel to the ends of the earth in about three seconds. So that's how God is using technology. And we need to be thankful for that because it's, it's truly incredible, truly incredible. But the dark side is there as well. The USA Today recently just said, you will get chipped eventually. Well, the world will. We won't. But the world will someday willingly get chipped. It will get chipped. And that'll be Mark of the Beast technology again. So my only point is, uh, when you see these things begin to happen, you know, look up. So we're beginning to see these things happen. And whether they're tribulation events or church age events, in either case, they're beginning to cast a huge shadow right now. You can't miss it. And I, God doesn't want us to miss it. He doesn't want us to miss it. He's telling us, I am coming soon. I'm coming soon. Are you ready? Okay, number seven, temple talk. Third temple talk is just, it's huge. I'm posting articles on the third temple many times a week because it's in the process. Times of Israel, laying the groundwork for a third temple in Jerusalem. The Israelis who take rebuilding the third temple very seriously. The vestments are being prepared. All the utensils are being prepared. The priests are being prepared for the third temple. It's called the tribulation temple. Okay, we don't see it, but so what? I mean, that's not the point. The point is the hour is late. The point is it's happening. It's happening. We won't, I don't believe we'll ever see it. I believe it goes up during the tribulation. Uh, This was an interesting picture. Sanhedrin mints coin with images of Trump and Cyrus to promote rebuilding the temple. So will we ever see this little uh, piece of artwork here, the temple actually being constructed in downtown Jerusalem? I don't think so. And some would say we could. I think this goes up during the tribulation. The church is gone. The tribulation is for Israel and the unbelieving world. It is not for the church. Again, those who uh, would be critical of that are being, they're contending in a contentious way. I never thought I would see the kind of contention going on to rapture timing. But nonetheless, I don't think we'll ever see this. I think this goes up during the tribulation and the church is enjoying heaven. And the tribulation is for, again, for the unbelieving world to bring Israel to faith. A number eight sign that I believe God is heralding. And I don't know how you miss this, folks. I don't know how. Mideast activity and alignment, it's simply stunning. And every day, it's not once a week, it's every day, there's some kind of Mideast activity. Israel said to strike targets near Damascus. Can you say Isaiah 17:1? Another one here is from the New York Times. Israel attacks targets in Syria after Iranian drone enters Israeli airspace and jet crashes. And another headline here, Times of Israel. Waving piece of down drone, Prime Minister, that's Netanyahu, threatens direct military action against Iran. So again, we've got players on a chessboard that are being moved by God. 
being moved and being put in place just exactly where he wants them. You never would have seen this picture 15 to 20 years ago, maybe not even 10 years ago. The Gog Magog Alliance right in front of us here. You've got Iran, Russia, and Turkey leaders uniting. That's Ezekiel 38 and 39. And there they are right in front of our eyes. There are more nations there, but these are the three most prominent nations. And they're they're partners, they're pals. So, you know, God is screaming, get ready, get ready. This Zechariah 12, 3, we're still in alignment in the Middle East. Zechariah, the burdensome stone. Despite Haley threat, UN votes to condemn Trump's Jerusalem decision. So we've got people are in a fury over what's happening with Jerusalem. The fact that Donald Trump actually declared it as the capital. Fury across the Middle East as leaders condemn President Donald Trump after he says Jerusalem is Israel's capital. You would never have seen this 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Never would have seen it. But now we see it on a daily basis. We have all these players coming together. Protests held worldwide against Jerusalem. Capital move. Again, that's Zechariah 12.3. Israel and specifically Jerusalem has become the burdensome stone because of Donald Trump's proclamation. Jerusalem is the burdensome stone, just as the Bible predicted. Arabs, Europe, UN reject Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israeli capital. Well, this doesn't surprise me because my favorite verse in all the Bible is Psalm 102, 16. And when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He built up Zion. It started in the late 1800s and certainly picked up steam in 1948 and has been picking up steam ever since 1948 and used America in a very significant way actually going back to even President Wilson in 1917 because he went along with the Balfour Declaration. He was a progressive, but he was still in favor of the Balfour Declaration back in 1917, using President Harry Truman, and then all throughout history using U.S. presidents as a blessing or a cursing. So, But America has played a huge role, heavily for the good. Now, I believe sign number nine to pay attention would be the longing for a leader. And I believe that, forgive my repetition here, but it's important, I believe that the world is longing for a man with a plan, for a Mr. Fix-It. It says down at the bottom of here, is there a leader who can stop the chaos and heal America? Again, and I talked about it earlier, this longing for a man longing for someone who would be a savior. Again, the cry for a savior and a global leader is Emmanuel Macron. Is he that global leader? Is he at least Europe's savior, perhaps? You need to keep your eyes on him. I think he's, personally, I think that the globalists are using him as testing the waters, in this case, almost literally, testing the waters to see how a young, charismatic, European aggressive leader will be received around the world. I think the globalists have installed him, are honoring him. Here from Breitbart in Great Britain, Emmanuel Bonaparte, Macron declares he will govern like a Roman god. A very suspicious character. Again, we don't get involved in trying to name the Antichrist or the false prophet, though Tom made laid out a brilliant case this morning for who could be the false prophet, and I would concur with his conclusions 100%. And again, going back to Paul Henry Spock, we want what we want is a man of sufficient stature to hold the alliances of all people and lift us out of the economic morass into which we are sinking. Again, be he God or devil, we will receive him this longing for someone who can come and stop terrorism, come and stop the financial perhaps peril that's ahead with Wall Street up and down, up and down. Perhaps that's going to spread all across the globe. Perhaps it's all going to head down, though I still maintain that Donald Trump has brought peace and prosperity, which is going to be a bigger reality, continued peace and prosperity because of the verses that I cited earlier. Now, I am going to build just a little bit more on what Tom Hughes taught this morning. And I believe number 10, sign number 10, is an unconventional pope. And we have not had this so 
prominent as we have the last three, four years. We have a pope, and you heard the teaching this morning, who is uh, certainly, well, again, he's unconventional. Pope Francis the unconventional. That's being conservative, to just call him unconventional. He's got some very apocalyptic-like character traits. I encourage you to get the DVDs and hear what Tom said if you missed it. Pope Francis, a charismatic and unconventional leader who touches people's hearts. And as we both said, we both know Catholics who are troubled by this pope. He's so unconventional, but at the same time, he's so charismatic. And then this particular headline, I just did a double take and it was referenced this morning. Erdogan, President, Prime Minister Turkey, Pope, form unholy anti-Trump alliance to control Jerusalem. Now, when a pope wants to control Jerusalem, you need to pay attention. You really need to pay attention. So the Turkey and the Vatican are uniting to somehow control Jerusalem. This is huge. That's huge news. And what does it say in Revelation again, 17? He carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was clothed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a gold cup full of abominations and of the unclean things of her immorality. And on her forehead, a name was given mystery. Babylon the great, the mother of harlots, and the abomination of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints. Who has been drunk with the blood of non-Catholics? And with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus, when I saw her, I wondered greatly. I believe Rome is mystery Babylon. Now, I realize that is a debate. Is Jerusalem mystery Babylon? Is Mecca mystery Babylon? I think it all points to Rome as being mystery Babylon. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, Revelation 17, 4. And you also heard Tom talk about this particular article right here. We both picked it out, I don't know, months ago, weeks ago for sure. This is a Catholic spokesman in Colombia, South America. Now, this is a Catholic saying this, not a Protestant. A Catholic is saying Pope Francis is paving the way for the Antichrist. And as we were talking a little bit at lunch, the only thing Pope Francis has against him is his age, because he's going to burn out here one of these days just because he's aging so. But if he goes out of the picture, I believe someone's going to step in and just sort of continue on as he is be another unconventional. Again, we do not know. We see through a glass darkly, and I appreciate that verse in Scripture that we see through a glass darkly, because we do. We do not know these things for sure. And to make speculations and to make declarations that so-and-so is this and -and so-and-so is that, it's not the best idea, because then we have egg on our face when we're proven wrong. Um, So we just need to be very, very careful. Now, having said that, you've heard two of us today emphasize this, the role, the probable role of the Vatican in the last days. Not bashing Catholics, again, not, that's not my intent at all, but again, I wish Catholics would perhaps think that maybe time to check out a, a different church because of some of the evil connotations here. I'm going to wrap up this presentation just a minute or two. I'll take a short break when we get back. We'll finish with uh, why we may be the terminal generation. Don't go away. Teaching Bible prophecy would be one of the greatest things that a church could do to its congregants because, one, it gives them the hope of Christ's soon coming. Secondly, it motivates them to get the job done. That is to get out there and tell their friends and their family and their co-workers that Jesus Christ is coming. And then thirdly, it brings people great great confidence. Confidence in knowing that God's Word never fails. It will never fail because what God has said in the past has been confirmed by His prophetic fulfillment. Study Bible prophecy and get excited about the future. Understanding the Times is now heard every weekend from coast to coast on over 800 radio stations. We love to hear from those who listen every week. We welcome your correspondence when you write to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. We invite you to drop Jan a note. Tell her how this program has affected your life. We so appreciate people like you who will take time to pray for this listener-supported broadcast ministry. Please consider how you can partner with us financially. Please help us continue to be faithful to what God has called us to do. You can give online at olivetreeviews.org. 
or call 763-559-4444 or write to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Again, the phone number, 763-559-4444. Olive Tree Ministries is carrying a new product to help you contend for the faith and understand the times. It is Terry James' new book, Deceivers, Exposing Evil Seducers and Their Last Day's Deception. Our generation is characterized by deceiving tactics in the church, the media, the schoolroom, the government, the globalist agenda, and much, much more. I have contributed a chapter in the book talking about the deception that has invaded the church in the last 30 years. Find the book in our web store at olivetreeviews.org, the hardbound 320-page reference book. You can call us to order at 763-559-4444, 763-559-4444. It is also featured in our print and e-newsletter. Sign up online. Don't let the deceivers fool you or those you care about. Many are falling for these deceptions and delusions of our day. Stay in tune and up to date. Order Deceivers today. There is a rush to globalism, this rush to the one worldism. I've never seen it like this ever. And I commented that the 2016 election, the globalists were sure Hillary Clinton was going to win. It was a no brainer that, that she was going to win. Like God intervened and said, you know what? I'm going to give you folks a little bit more time. The global empire, which would have come about in a Clinton administration, Clinton Global Initiative, it's going to be delayed. We're going to give a little more time to get the gospel out. But underneath it all is the world clamoring, clamoring for a one world, a world without borders, one government, no poverty, no war, no terrorism, because the single leader will put a lid on all of that. Next on Understanding the Times Radio, the conclusion of today's presentation, The Terminal Generation. Let's return now to Jan Markell. Taking just a bit of a midsummer break here. Actually, I'm ministering this weekend at Dr. Dave Reagan's Prophecy Conference in Dallas, Texas. And so I'm playing the audio to a recent DVD I made. It's got about 80 PowerPoint slides to accompany it. We're going to wrap it up now. Why We May Be the Terminal Generation 15 Signs of His Imminent Return. Let's conclude the presentation. Number 11, a world without borders. Referring a little bit to what we covered earlier today, there is a rush to globalism, this rush to the one worldism. I've never seen it like this ever. And I commented that the 2016 election, the globalists were sure Hillary Clinton was going to win. It was a no brainer that, that she was going to, but like God intervened and said, you know what? I'm going to give you folks a little bit more time. The global empire, which would have come about in a Clinton administration, Clinton Global Initiative. It's going to be delayed. We're going to give a little more time to get the gospel out. Here, the Austrian, the world according to Trump, the anti-globalist agenda. As I said earlier, he represents the anti-globalist agenda. So there's been a, God hit the pause button. He said, we don't know his mind, so we don't know what he's thinking, but I have a suspicion that he's thinking, You are being given a little bit more time to get out the gospel, to get out the good news. But underneath it all is the world, as I said this morning, clamoring, clamoring, clamoring for a one world, a world without borders, one government. Everybody gets the same pay. Everybody's no poverty, no war, no terrorism, because the single leader will put a lid on all of that. I think this is one of the most significant signs of the times. Who is Donald Trump? Why the U.S. globalist elites dread President-elect Trump. That goes back to 2016. The globalist elites were, they didn't think he'd win. Then he did win, and now they, did, they didn't know what to do, and they still don't know what to do. So, point number 12. We're going to get to 15 here in just a minute. Wolves among the flock. Some of you, and I hear from you, you don't have a church because whatever church you visited sold out to some kind of apostasy. I have never, again, I've never seen it like it is today. Let's just consider. I just wrote a chapter in Terry James' book called Deceivers. It's a 
big hard, I don't have it, it's just it's coming out next week, Deceivers, and I wrote a chapter on deception in the church. I think it was 25 pages. I realized it needed to be a, a complete book. Postmodernism, social gospel, these are things that are infecting the church. I went on and on and on. Seeker sensitive, New Apostolic Reformation, or NAR, so-called prophets. I don't really believe there are prophets today, and too many of them seem to be all about financial profit. Holy laughter, nothing funny about it. It's very demonic. Infecting church after mysticism, contemplative prayer, infecting church after church. You go down the street, almost any church you've come to will be featuring one or all of these dominionism, kingdom now. This teaches that the church is going to make the world perfect and only then can Jesus Christ return. How's that working out? It's going to take 20 million years for the church to make the world perfect and then the Lord can return. That's dominionism, kingdom now. It's nonsense, complete, utter nonsense. We've got latter rain. We've got um, amillennialism, was referred to this morning. They take nothing literally, uh, particularly no millennium. This is rampant in every, almost every denomination, certainly Catholicism and every mainline Protestant believes in amillennialism. There's nothing, there's no millennium. There's nothing literal. We don't take anything literally. So that has infected more denominations than I could even cite today. Post-millennialism, I can't get into definitions here. You can look some of this up. Protestants are moving towards Catholicism. Never thought I'd see this happen in my lifetime, but it's happening. No to Bible prophecy. You're not going to find it. You come up and ask me out there, well, where can I find a prophecy preaching church in this area? Perhaps right here, and that's maybe it. This is a topic that the church has thrown out, thrown into the trash, and set a fire to it. They do not want to deal with the fact that the Lord is coming back. It will keep people away. It will keep younger people away. How many young people do we have today? Hardly any. Thankfully, there are a few, and thank you for coming. But again, this is off limits because it's got too much negativity tied to it. Moving away from Israel's support, it's overwhelming. And I'm talking about evangelicals now. I'm not just talking about mainline Protestants. Moving away from Israel's support. All This is all part of the great falling away. Replacement theology. The church is Israel. Drive down the street. Almost any church you come to, any denomination, will believe that the church is the new Israel. And they couldn't be more wrong. Uh, Christian Palestinianism. Yasser Arafat brought that into existence some a decade or more ago. Uh, Jesus was a Palestinian, not... Jewish. He was a Palestinian. And that's rampant in our churches. Sorry, but people like Bill and Lynn Hybels have not helped because these are the, that's the kind of thing that they like to promote. And then they have thousands of churches under Willow Creek who all catch on to this kind of teaching and thinking. So, and again, the Bible speaks of the doctrines of demons. The Spirit says expressly that in the latter times some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. I just did a radio program on Christ alignment. This is a month ago. Christ alignment comes out of Australia, and it's caught on churches there, and it's catching on here. And they use destiny cards. It's a Christianized form of, of Christianizing tarot cards to pr predict your future. That's what they're doing here, using destiny cards as tarot cards. This is in the church. So again, I've never seen things at the level it is today. That's all I'm saying. It's at the intensity. Remember, those birth pangs are getting stronger and stronger, and these aberrations are out of control. They're simply out of control. How about those birth pangs? Again, they are of biblical proportion. Billion-dollar disasters of 2017 in the U.S., and staggering. How many of us sat and actually wept in front of our televisions in 2017 watching the disasters? This is a chart here of on the far left is 1980 and on the far right is today. Uh, you can see escalation, 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 and these are billion dollar disasters by year, 1980 to today. Increasing? How about 27 trillion gallons of water on Houston. Is that an intensifying birth pang or is it not? How would you like to be under 27 trillion gallons of water as good people were last summer? So God is saying, you know what? Pay attention. 
pay attention. I am coming soon, and I've got some markers I've put in the Bible. And you just want, all you have to do is look at some of these markers, and if you'll interpret them in a proper way, they're saying, I am coming soon. Again, some of these disasters, when you get to the tribulation, hurricanes like this one, they pale by comparison because what's going to happen disaster-wise in the tribulation is literally unspeakable. It's literally unspeakable. You don't want to be left behind. You don't. And time's running out for those of you who are choosing not to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, point number 14 of the 15 that I consider to be the most prominent. Again, we could talk about 215 or 315. It would be the rise of persecution. And Jesus said that you'll be hated by all men because of me. And he was talking to his people, and I believe that includes both Jews and Christians, Middle East Christians, on the eve of destruction. And this has been the case for you know millennia, really, certainly for centuries. But it is escalating and escalating out of control. And I believe that's another herald of his coming. Here, a German Jewish leader warns that Jews may require police protection as anti-Semitism escalates. In New York City, homework, New York students debate exterminating Jews. Again, Jews and Christians, Jews and Christians, those are the two targets. Muslims aren't the target. Buddhists aren't the target. New Agers aren't the target. Jews and Christians are the target. Now, there's one thing, and we've always said that Israel is the super sign, and, and I still maintain that it is, but one more thing has come along that I think is so significant. And a lot of people are saying this is actually the most significant, and that is, would be the convergence of all of these things. I've only dealt here with 15. I was just handed a book by an uh, author I know with 50 signs, Dave Reagan has a teaching, 50 signs, and Dave Reagan goes through about one every 10 seconds. He goes just like that to get to all 50, and I've selected only 15. But then when you take those and others and you put them all together, you have the biblical convergence. These signs are in surround sound, living color, high definition, screaming at us. I am coming soon. I am coming soon. Everyone here, I think most of you take that very seriously. I think there are some that are still very skeptical. And all I can say to those who are skeptical, to those that want to reject this kind of a message, is that your time is running out. If it is late as we think it is, then your time, if you're watching on DVD or any other way that you're accessing this, and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your time is running out. Your time is running out. Eternity is at stake. Eternity is at stake. I have used the term terminal generation in a positive way in this presentation. To the believer, terminal indicates that soon we will be spending eternity with our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us to watch for signs. Some manifest in the tribulation, but they are casting their shadow now. Jai 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 Jai